We often hear President Monson say, reach out to rescue. This brings to my mind an account in the New Testament and is a perfect illustration of how members and missionaries can work together through ward councils to reach out and rescue. The story is found in Mark chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. I find that the experiences Jesus used to teach us certain doctrines or principles are always most instructive. One of the characters in this account is a man with palsy, someone who was not able to move without assistance. This man had to wait for help. In our day, it might happen like this. Four people were to make a home visit to a man with palsy. They were fulfilling an assignment given by their bishop. I can visualize one of them coming from the Relief Society, one from the Elders' Quorum, one from the Aaronic Priesthood, and, last but not least, one is a full-time missionary. In the most recent Ward Council, after discussing together the needs of individuals, the bishop gave out rescuing assignments. These four were assigned to help this man. They could not wait for him to come to church by himself. They had to make a home visit. They had to seek him out by going to find him. And so they went. The man was being brought to Jesus. And they came unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of four. However, the room was too crowded. They could not get in through the door. I am sure they tried very hard, but they just could not get through. Things did not happen as smoothly as planned. There were obstacles along their way of rescue, but they did not give up. They did not leave the man by the door. They discussed what to do next how they could bring the man unto Jesus Christ to be healed. The work to assist Jesus Christ in saving souls, at least for them, was never too demanding. They came up with a plan, not an easy one, but they acted on it. And when they could not come nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was, and when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. They brought him up to the roof. Assuming there was no outside staircase, it would have taken them some time to get everyone onto the roof. It might have happened this way. The young man from his ward climbed up to the roof first. Being young and full of energy, it would not have been difficult for him. His home teaching companion from the elders' quorum and the full-time missionary would have pushed the others onto the roof from below. The Relief Society sister would have reminded them to be careful and given them words of encouragement. The men would then uncover the roof while the sister continued to comfort the man as he waited to be healed and regain his freedom of movement.
This rescue assignment requires everyone to work together. At this crucial moment, it would take careful coordination to lower the man from the roof. The four people would have to work in harmony and without any discord. They have to lower the man with palsy at the same pace. If one person released the rope faster than the other three, the man would fall out of his bed. He could not hold on by himself due to his weakened condition. To assist the Savior, we have to work together in unity and in harmony. Every individual and every calling are important. We must work together, united in our Lord, Jesus Christ. Finally, the paralyzed man was laid before Jesus. When Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. Jesus showed mercy on him and healed him, not only physically, but also spiritually. Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. Isn't that wonderful? Wouldn't we like that to happen to all of us, too? Certainly, I would. Do we know anyone in our life who is spiritually paralyzed, someone who just cannot come back to the church by himself or herself? He or she could be one of our children, one of our parents, a spouse or a friend. With so many more full-time missionaries now in each church unit, it will be wise for bishops and branch presidents to make better use of their ward and branch councils. The bishop can invite each member of the ward council to come with a list of names of those who may need assistance. Members of the ward council will counsel together carefully on how they might best help. Bishops will listen attentively to the ideas and make assignments. Full-time missionaries are great resources to the wards in these rescue efforts. They are young and full of energy. They love to have a list of specific names of people to work with. They enjoy working with ward members. They know these are great finding opportunities. They are devoted in establishing the Lord's kingdom. They have a strong testimony that they will become more Christ-like as they participate in these rescuing efforts. In conclusion, may I share with you one more hidden treasure found in this scripture account. It is in verse 5. When Jesus saw their faith. I had not noticed this in the, fa in the past. Their faith. Our combined faith will also affect the well-being of others. Who were those people that Jesus mentioned? They could well include the four who carried the man with palsy, the man himself, the people who had prayed for him, and all those who were there listening to the preaching of Jesus and cheering quietly in their hearts for the soon-to-come miracle. They could also include a spouse, a parent, a son, or a daughter, a missionary, a quorum president, a relief society president, a bishop, or a faraway friend. We can all help one another. We should always be anxiously engaged in seeking to rescue those in need. I testify that Jesus Christ is a God of miracles. He loves us all. 
and has the power to save and heal both physically and spiritually. When we assist him in his mission of saving souls, we too will be rescued in the process. I so testify in his holy name, in Jesus Christ. Amen.